I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fangs, claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, just sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. At the time we're going to release this, it is Memorial Day. Huh. No shit, I forgot about Memorial Day. I don't get it off, so that's why I forgot about it. So. <laughs> I do, and I have no excuse. So, uh, huh. Okay, so is this imp- so, is this a theme? A theme? Like, like a memor- tangentially related to Memorial Day episode? No, not in, okay. even remotely in the slightest. Okay, so I- we're at least we're that. on brand for I'm having only... episodes not related at all to what they're near. <laughs> Correct. So, um, important fact, though, this uh, yeah. week... Uh, a movie that I have been looking forward to for four years is coming out. Oh, wait a minute. Hang on. Is this a new Godzilla movie? Yes, it is. Nice. King of the Monsters is coming out on the 31st. Hell yeah. Yeah. I'm super excited. I have been keeping a total uh, media blackout on all the trailers. Oh, okay. I was going to send them to you, but I thought John has already seen all of these. Nope. I have. I've only seen the first one that had 11 okay. in it, and I've seen clips of Ghidorah, but that's it. Okay. Then I won't even I des- have, describe the trailers to you. Yeah. I've I've deliberately, like, I saw, I've seen all the new kaiju designs, but I have deliberately not allowed myself to watch them. Okay, cool. Because I am hyper excited for this. Godzilla learns to use chopsticks. Mm, I, I think he already knew how to use chopsticks. Just like that one cartoon. With a dog where they yeah. put the chopsticks in their hand and it's just like, it's easy, just do it like this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's that's pretty a, great. That's a pretty good bit. I forget what the name of that show was. It was like something dogs chan or something i don't know cheaton by the way has been on point with all of his posts recently he really has yeah or she i think it's a she technically i'm fine either way cheaton has just been on point with their posts (laughs) and it's pretty great no it's 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 pretty phenomenal uh still still targeting down uh john oliver though yeah well i mean it's it's new and exciting that they can do. Yes, that is exactly it. Yes. Yeah, I found I found the thing we were talking about. Oh, it's uh, Inoko-san. Is the okay. Name. Inoko-san. That's, that's the, like, like uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> what were we talking about, Godzilla? Yeah, man, Godzilla. So well, it's more you were talking about, Godzilla. Which, is, it's if it's not Transformers, it's Godzilla. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. Fair. Uh, I I wanted to do a kaiju theme for this week. Oh, but here's the thing. Yeah. Uh, Godzilla is too complicated to do in a week, and I have to spend a lot more time working on Godzilla. Okay. And uh, the other one, the um, what's the word? Um, I'm sorry. As I was saying what I was doing, I had Amazon open because I was going to look something up and I forgot what it was. Mm -hmm. And uh, Isekai has gone too far. Has Isekai... Isekai, I thought, has been getting better, right? Because there was Isekai good, then it was Isekai bad for a while. Now I think it's Isekai good again. It it is. There's some good stuff. But there's this. Um, I'm not going to say it. I want you to read the title. Okay. And hopefully I can paste it. Yeah, there we go. And boop. Okay, reincarnated as a sword. Okay, Isekai has gone too far now. Yeah, right? Like, <laughs> like way, way too too hard. Yeah, yeah. Like, that, like I was on the fence at, on that time I got reincarnated as a slime until I watched it, and then I thought, I like it. This no, yeah, has gone yeah. too far. <laughs> reincarnated no, is... as a sword. 
this is this is way too far. Like, too far. And he's being carried around by a cat girl. Maybe that's is, how all of that Pokemon came out. Like, Pokemon Sword. Uh, they're all just reincarnated humans. Yes. This is... I, I'm sorry. I'm just... This is now my day. After this podcast is over, I'm just learning more about this thing. <laughs> because, like... I mean, reincarnated as a sword. My like, body is metal. <laughs> Look into I my eyes move. when you sharpen me. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> I feel. Oh man, whetstone. Continue. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> the wettest of stones. <laughs> So let's uh let's avoid another fifteen minute. <laughs> oh God. Um, be gentle with my hilt. Continue. Be gentle with. Oh. My palm is ticklish. Careful with the cross guard. Don't touch the strong of the blade. Don't touch the weak of the blade. Uh, okay, so all that stuff that Brandon usually says on his weeks about Wikipedia and what it is. Just, just, just copy and paste what Brandon yeah, says. And put it imagine here. we said that. <laughs> imagine we said that. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I'm John. I'm Brandon. <laughs> and we're professional. We've done this is our 36th one of these. Yeah. <laughs> um. So we're not doing a cryptid this week again. Well. Ooh. We are. Okay. But it's not just one cryptid. Is it a... It's okay. a phenomena. Here comes... Well, I'll let you give me the info, then I'll have follow-up questions, perhaps. Okay. It's a so, phenomena. Um, all right. So usually I do taxonomy, first sighting, all that stuff. Yeah. You can't really do that for this one. Uh, the region is New England. In, in particular, it's uh, southeast Massachusetts. Okay. So near Cape Cod. Um, it was first conceived and reported upon in, in the 1980s. Okay. But Ooh, that's recent. Some people think that it goes back to the 1600s. Okay. So probably the 1980s. Probably the 1980s. So, yeah. Um, it's also a triangle phenomena. Okay, like a blank area triangle or the thing we are talking about itself is the shape of a triangle? We're talking about a blank area triangle, kind of like a Bermuda triangle. Yeah. Okay. So do you know which triangle exists in southeast Massachusetts? Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay. This phenomena is it a constant, one specific type of recurring thing, or is it sort of like a a bunch of different things that are weird happen in this specific triangle? It's so many different weird things that I literally couldn't fit them all in one episode. Oh man. Okay. This is Massachusetts. This is I've. I don't think I've ever been or can think of the name of any place within Miss. <laughs> so, um, well, wait, wait, what? Like Boston? Oh, Boston. Yeah. Limit? I forgot that's those. That's not, that's not Massachusetts. So those don't Cape count. Cod. Cape Cod's in Massachusetts. All of the things I just said are in, are in Massachusetts. I know Boston everywhere else are just names of places people go to on vacation, but I don't know where they are. Holyoke, birthplace yeah. of basketball. Holyoke, Cape Cod. I did not know that was in Massachusetts legitimately. I just know it's a place <laughs> It's a place people go on vacation, and that is all I know about it. Because I'm just like, it's a cape, there's water, there's people not going. So like that. <laughs> that's, that's, I, that's like the most northeastern sentiment about Cape Cod ever. <laughs> like it instantly went into the bucket of 
places I know I'm not going, so I'm not going to learn about. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say this. <laughs> Getting to the tip of Cape Cod is a yeah. pain. I believe it. Uh, I remember my family drove there once, and it's like ridiculous how long getting to like driving through cape cod is it's old and populated so none of the roads make sense <laughs> i That's get, like fact anywhere in the 13 like nothing the roads don't make sense for the current setup so just everything's awful <laughs> yeah it, it's it's well boston itself is yeah. a nightmare let me tell you yeah i uh, Lisa and I went to Boston on vacation once. Yeah. Um, and was it was it, it was... John? John was it was it John? Was it John? Was it wicked awesome? Eh 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 eh. No. I have coworkers no. who go through Massachusetts like every day, and they're uh, they call them mass holes. Mass holes. Yes. <laughs> Anywho, so uh, yeah, it's. So, any guesses? My or... guess, so this is a triangle. It's Massachusetts. They say the word wicked a lot. They have the Red Sox. I'm going to say it is the 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 Massachusetts. So, what are name places in Massachusetts? Boston, Cape Cod, and name one other place. Plymouth. Plymouth. Holyoke. Plymouth Holyoke Triangle, because that rolls off the tongue better. Well, Holyoke is in uh, Western Mass, like like Western Massachusetts, yeah. so it's not that. Uh, it's the Bridgewater Triangle. Oh no, shit! Okay, hang on, yep. hang on, John. Wait, wait, and actually, I'm saying that to me. You continue. I have in my secret list of things to that I could draw upon for uh, things, topics, and such. Mm-hmm. Bridgewater Triangle. I haven't looked at it. I just added it to the list because I heard someone say it once. So I was like, <laughs> which is basically how I get all these. I make a list of I, things I, people said once, and then I look at them later. I mean, that's basically the definition of Wikipedia. Yeah. Like, I literally have my own personal list now. That's yeah. basically things that Lissa has sent me or that I've seen. <laughs> I, And then I also have, like, a list of topics that I'm actively researching where I, yeah. I just have it open. And I'll work on it for, like, a couple days, and I'll throw some stuff onto it, and then I'll move on. Um, I'm excited that you're doing this, because I think I might have given it, like, a two-second Google and just went right away, like, none of these articles are long enough. And just, like, didn't even, <laughs> like, didn't even give it the time of day. So, here's the fact of the matter. Uh, the Bridgewater Triangle is so many tiny, itsy-bitsy phenomena yeah. all stitched together that... Like, each individual event probably takes, like, three seconds to talk about. I probably saw, like, a couple articles that were, like, of one specific thing. It just went too short. I officially struck it from the record in my list of things I can look at. (laughs) Uh, So, before we get into it, um, this week's episode was suggested by our Hodag-level patron, Connor Hughes. Hell yeah, Connor. Thank you, Connor. Connor did Um, the, uh, if I recall correctly, um, suggested Puckwudgie. Um, yes. Yeah, which another one where I looked at it and I was like, ah, I wish. Ah. It's actually really close to your wheelhouse of things, the puck laundry, by it, the way. It is. It's there's, like super on your on uh, your. There's style. so little on it. I have to find an academic article from like a real folklorist. Yeah. Like, there, it, well, that's a. It, it, that's it's a, a lot one. of things. Yeah. That's a lot of things. <laughs> um, so I think that this is actually our third uh listener suggested topic hell yeah uh the first being the night crawlers which you covered mm-hmm. the second being skinwalkers thunderbird might have been one i don't remember i think someone posted thunderbirds in the facebook group uh, of just like a list of things that would be fun to to get yeah and then there's this i should do so, puck i should i should write something up for puck even if it's not a like a full hour i could still like you should uh you should read the list of things that this episode's about, Brandon. Is it I'm still I haven't got read the outline part yet. Well it's it's under the title. The Hawk uh, Mock Swamp. And then 
Uh, Massachusetts. Oh, the, okay. Never mind. You did it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. So now I don't um, have to look stuff up. <laughs> yep. So um, for this week, I've got a few credulous sources. Um, and by that, I mean sources that are in support of the phenomena. Okay. Uh, there's the documentary, The Bridgewater Triangle, which I watched. Yeah. Uh, it's okay. Let's okay. Just say it's okay. Uh, there is a phenomenal section towards the end when they nice. talk about a hitchhiker, which is very funny. The the recreation that they did. Yeah. Hilarious. Nice. Hilarious. Hell yeah. I recommend I recommend checking it out. Just that. Um. There's also Lauren Coleman's book mysterious america which i purchased for this and then i realized well basically i looked at the table of contents and i realized that it would be useful for more than just this so i bought it oh. um and then there's some excerpts from uh christopher forrest curious creatures of new england um now that i'm reading that i realize now that i didn't t- use that book at all <laughs> um i did yeah. look at it for some other like other stuff surrounding area stuff but i didn't use it as a primary source um but it is a part of the sources that i read to prepare for this okay Uh, i'll call it out anyways um more skeptical sources and sources delving deeper into phenomena as always will be cited in the show notes because they're they're more or less okay yeah i know i'm a nerd (laughs) um so, before we begin, uh, we should kind of outline what the triangle is. So, in the in the, the research thing that you have access to, Brandon, yes. uh, I've got a picture of the Bridgewater Triangle. It yep, is I'm 200... observing um, I, a, 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 basically a geometric shape comprised mm-hmm. of only three lines. Um, I would classify it as isosceles if I had to. Um uh, it might be scalene. Or it could be scalene, yeah. And, uh, uh, yeah, it, it's, uh, I would, the best way way I could describe it is it's triangular in appearance. That's fair. That's fair. Um, I also just realized that is probably the first time I've used the term scalene in at least a decade. <laughs> um, yup. Yup. <laughs> So it's a it's a 200 square mile triangle. Yes. Um, and traditionally, it's drawn between the three towns of Abington, Rehoboth, and Freetown uh, in southeastern Massachusetts. Uh, the original triangle was outlined by Lauren Coleman in his book Mysterious America. Uh, some people have begin to begun to say that it's not necessarily accurate, but I think that's just people trying to ascribe. Uh, phenomena to an existing phenomena mm-hmm. just because they feel like it yeah and it's not so much it's it's one of those things where weird sightings happen everywhere and just mm-hmm. because it happens near a triangle that was arbitrarily selected by someone in the 1980s it yeah. doesn't mean that it, it it's it's a continuation of the phenomena <laughs> but that's a whole nother thing yeah <laughs> we should just name a triangle we just find places and, and declare a triangle somewhere. Ulster County Triangle. Boom! Booyah! There we go. Uh, oh wait, wait. Uh, the Hudson Valley Triangle. Something that involves something that involves uh, Ellenville for sure. Yeah. Like that's 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 dead center of it. So anything else, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> we should make the world's smallest uh, strange phenomena triangle, where it's like just three businesses that are on different sides of a road, but they're all like real close. Um. I'll tell you the world world's uh, smallest paranormal phenomena triangle. Yeah. Uh, it's centered around my toilet. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, so for years, the Bridgewater Triangle has been a hotbed of paranormal activity. Yeah, so is your Stories, toilet. Yeah, it has been for several years. I've had this house for three years, so that entire time has been a wild ride for that toilet. <laughs> let me tell you. Um, stories of ghosts, cryptids, and even demons abound Ooh. in this haunted region and okay. now when i say demons i say i mean like matt literal... demons yes matt demons and satanic panic oh i forgot about satanic panic yeah yeah it's i don't know if i'm gonna get into it on this this particular series but it's uh 
kind of weird. Uh huh. So the region is is said by some, namely the in the Bridgewater Triangle documentary, uh, to be the victim of a Native American curse. Okay, the start of every good Stephen King movie. Pretty much every it, Native American curse, New England writer. Yeah. Those are the three. That's the that's the trifecta. Oh yeah. Um, if all three are happening, bad stuff is about to happen to that main character. Oh yeah. Um. The hypothesis posits that King Philip's War, also known as Metacom's War, is the catalyzing event for this curse. Honestly, not sure about this idea. Kind of smells like people are making a scapegoat out of Native Americans. Yeah. Well, you know uh, that this. What you're reading about right now is what the video game Prey was based upon. Was it? Yeah. Not we're talking new about Prey. The, old we're talking Prey. about Portal Prey, which takes place in, I want to say, like, Nevada. It takes place in, like, old Xbox demos. <laughs> yeah, I never bought the game. I always wanted to buy it, but I never I did. did. Too. Yeah. Like, it was one of those games I wanted to play, but I never played. Like, I never got it. (laughs) Uh Uh-huh. I think someone we knew had a copy of it, but it it, it was Portal before Portal. It was was a good game. I played the demo, like, a lot, but I never... Yeah. Because it it is at that point in time where it's like, I didn't just have the income to just buy every game I wanted all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And then then when you have the income to buy every game you want all the time, you don't play them. Yeah, yeah, you just don't have to... You either have the time to play all the games but not the money, or you have the money to play all the games but not the time. Yeah. Also, what's the deal with airline food? (laughs) Uh, Fantastic. So, uh, there is also a theory that Metacom's War is, in fact, a result of the Bridgewater Triangle phenomena, which was posited by WBSM, paranormal radio host of the Spooky South Coast... Uh, show uh, Tim Weisberg which I which he pr- presented this theory in the uh, the Bridgewater Triangle documentary I have my doubts I do too so that being said I think it's a good time to give a brief history lesson on Metacom's War nice. uh, because it's a seminal moment in North America history and it's I an learned extremely about it. extremely dark chapter in American history yeah uh so insert dollop me screaming uh, ni- uh 1675 because i don't feel like screaming because i have a headache fair um so the war in question lasted from 1675 to 1676 and while it was superficially a conflict between new england and native americans uh well the new england english and the new england native americans I misread my own copy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, Welcome to the club. Yep. Uh, it's been considered by uh, some to be a civil war between some of the participating Native American tribes. Um, I'm not going to get into a whole lot of details about that, but basically the idea is there was King Philip's faction, mm-hmm. and then there were factions that allied with the English. So it was one of those types of situations where... Yeah. Uh, because they were siding with each other, they would were like basically going at each other. Gotcha. Um, it, I think historians have begun to like view it in that light. I found like an article about it, and yeah. that's where most of my my sourcing is coming from. Because quite frankly, I didn't have the time to do a full in depth study of Metacom's War. Yeah, because it's also like a hyper bloody war with a yeah. lot of like moving parts going on. Okay. Um, so it should be noted, however, that this war, relative to the population of the area, is literally the most deadly war on American soil. Oh, shit. Because okay. the number of individuals who died Relative as a to the population result, as a percentage was greater than... Yeah. Gotcha. That reminds like, me. Yeah? Like, not even joking, Native Americans in the area, about 50% mortality rate. Oh, damn. Yeah. There's a, I read an article and there was a, a surgery on a single person and mm-hmm. the doctor involved has, it, it was the only surgery with a 300% mortality rate. 
because he was performing a finger amputation. And he did it so quickly and dumbly that he amputated the finger of the intended person and of his and of his assistant both died of sepsis and one onlooker who died of shock what so there was a 300 percent mortality rate on this one surgery oh my god <laughs> that that's a bad day yeah right uh-huh like everyone involved that's a bad day yeah also shock yeah, I'm not sure how that works. Like, it's a thing but, you read about, but you're, I don't, I can't picture. Yeah, I mean, I've never really been in a situation where I've experienced shock, so, like, of that na- nature. Yeah. Like, sudden shock, I've never experienced that. So. Mm-hmm. Although I was shocked on at least two occasions in my life. Uh-huh. Were they both, like, video links you were sent over AIM? No, no, I mean physically shocked. Oh, I've been shocked so, a few times. There was the the instance when I was trying to use a uh, multimeter on oh a, yeah AC power line, uh huh, and the multimeter exploded, and I thought I lost my hand <laughs> because it went into my hoodie. <laughs> I, I literally, I literally, I didn't know that. So I heard about that because you told yeah. like what it happened. We weren't in the yeah. same class when it happened. I heard about it. You didn't tell me. You thought your hand went away. <laughs> so, so for everyone who wants to know, I was playing with an old. Well, not playing. I was doing a lab assignment in high school yeah. with one of those old uh, scissor switches type things. It was like a light board. Yeah. And I was trying to get a solid read on the current through it, right? Yeah. For whatever reason, my brain was not thinking. And I'm like, man, I can't get these the amperage to, to stay consistent. It was uh, connected directly to a wall outlet. And if you, are, if you don't know what a wall outlet is, it's alternating current. What is current measured in? Amps. <laughs> so I held it on there for long enough. That the multimeter, which is not designed, uh, that particular one was not designed for alternating current, uh, it exploded in my hand. <laughs> and when I pulled my hand away, I looked down and, oh, hey, my hand's gone. That hurt way less than I was expecting it would. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah, the teacher wasn't in the room at the time. So. No. Uh, and then the other instance was when I was renovating my house, I may have grabbed a power outlet that was still act live. I have done that so many times. Yeah. Like I've, not... I've taken wall current, just the, the 115 AC, like so much. Yeah. Like, the, uh, it... the grounds on all the outlets on, uh, on my house, the ones that have them, um, are located on the front. So if you mm-hmm. try to uh, pry the faceplate off of this flathead screwdriver, new ones they're on the side, old ones are on the front. You just take that out. So so I've I've you know had to go and reset the breaker a few times. Uh, I've just stuck stuff into outlets once. Uh, I've had stuff <laughs> plugged into an outlet and uh, while working on it, and I've taken that a few times. <laughs> There's it's happened enough where at my old job I was working on a machine that was running. And um, I, I it was pretty tight, so I had my hand just against uh, a, a solid state relay, and mm-hmm. it's happened to me enough at, by that point in time where, like, I was working on something and I felt it, but it didn't register in my mind that it was I was getting shocked. I just thought I had my hand <laughs> no. on something that was like a little bit sharp, so I I like I wasn't even moving it. I was just like, this is uncomfortable but then i was like this is uncomfortable at repeating intervals and then i was like oh i'm getting electrocuted (laughs) (laughs) that's hilariously horrifying (laughs) it's also how i used to check if capacitors were charged you just real quick with your fingers Bam! Not like big ones, like ones on the side of little compressors. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bam! <laughs> you know, and if you get zapped, guess what? It had a charge. <laughs> <laughs> and if not, then you're good. Uh, 
Okay, well, getting back to Metacom's war. <laughs> uh-huh. So the war itself was uh, kickstarted by the murder of John Sassaman. He was okay. a uh, uh, English-aligned Native American. Okay. Uh, who had claimed that Metacom was getting ready to attack the English prior to his murder. Um, allegedly, three uh, Wampanoag Native Americans who were members of Metacom's tribe had murdered him, like, in a pond or something. I saw, like, a, yeah. a image of, like, the death of John Sassaman. I didn't yeah. reproduce it here. So, but... real quick, just so I get the order of events uh, yeah. correct. So... <clears throat> Medicom was murdered, and then after Medicom is already dead, John Sassaman then says to the English that he was getting preparing to an attack, or no, he said no, to the no. English he was preparing to attack, and that occurred before Medicom was murdered. So he was alive <laughs> at the time of John Sassaman uh, informing the English. Medicom is still alive for like another, another like two years at this point. Okay, this gotcha, gotcha. Uh, John Sassaman's the one who dies. Oh, okay. I so dig it. he, it's basically a snitch. It's prior to his own murder. I gotcha. Yeah. I gotcha. So he it's told the snitches. English this prior to his own murder. Gotcha. It's a snitches get stitches type thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. They don't fuck uh, around, man. I will say, though, it is alleged. Okay. So uh, I don't know if that is actually what happened. Probably is. Let's be real. But I don't know if that was exactly what happened. So. Oh. Oh, I just, <clears throat> it was very hard. I was going to do a bad accent saying snitches get stitches, but I didn't because I'm a cool guy. Yeah, I would have been very upset and we would have cut that out of the episode. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's that's uh, mostly why I didn't do it because I yeah. don't feel like editing that much. <laughs> yeah, that would not have made it in the episode. Uh, so effectively, this act lights the powder keg brewing in the region, which is like the Plymouth Colony region. Yeah. Um, And it, Basically, what was happening was there was a conflict over resources. Uh, the English were basically bribing Native Americans with, like, they were liquoring them up and then yeah. getting them to sign things to sign over their land. Yeah, uh, which is really shitty. Medicom, Medicom was actively trying to be like, "Hey, can we get this outlawed, yeah. please? Because this is not okay." Yeah. Um, Fantastic show, by the way. That reminds me of this is yeah. Frontier on Netflix. They're on season three, stars Jason Momoa, and it's all about, like, the English, the Native Americans, and the fur trade. But it's it's way better than a show about that would sound. Really? I mean, it does sound... Like, not gonna lie, there's a lot of drama that happens around that, because really, when you think about it, it's people's livelihood mixed with where people... Like, people's land and all that stuff. There's a lot of... uh inherent to the nature of it there's a lot of stuff that's important to people and emotions yeah. can run really hot yeah yeah like, it, it's like a legit real good show lots yeah. of action he can kill um, people with axes god damn it who the fuck is honking a horn uh <laughs> so anywho basically this is a powder keg situation yeah right and like even metacom's brother had been uh had died years earlier after being like kidnapped by the English and then like, getting sick. In Frontier, people... Jason Momoa kills someone with a powder keg. Continue. <laughs> Jason Momoa, that's um Call Drogo from Game of Thrones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what I thought. Or okay. Aquaman more recently. Yes. Um So the bloody fighting only ended with the capture and subsequent drawing and quartering of medical oh, at the shit. hands of the British. They don't this happen around. Yeah, no, they don't. This happened in seventy in 1676, although skirmishes did continue until 1678, and there was a treaty that was signed. Okay. Being drawn and quartered is not as fun as it looks in that one uh, uh, movie, Mel Gibson movie. Uh, I've never thought it looked fun, but okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, so... This war resulted in the deaths of 600 colonists. Okay. Keep in mind, this is 1676 colonists. I yeah. just hit my mic again. Um, <laughs> the destruction of 1,200 
colonist homes. Okay. And the complete decim like complete eradication of twelve of the ninety settlements in the region. Okay. Um So that's pretty it destructive. Be, yeah, it should be noted the British didn't expand in this area for fifty years after this oh. because of how destructive the fighting was. Yeah. So it was serious. Um that being said, the Native Americans fared way worse in this situation. Uh, oh, I believe about it. 2,000 were killed in fighting. 3,000 died to disease and sickness. And 1,000 were sold into slavery. Shoot. Yeah. Uh, so actually that number that I said before, the 50% yeah. number, uh, that was lowballing it. Yeah. Um, so if operating on that oft-repeated theory that this is like, you know, the notion of places have a memory trauma – yeah, like memory of trauma and stuff then like this that. This is a good candidate. Yeah, this would be a pretty good place for there to be a paranormal storm. Um, that being said, pure conjecture, right? Yeah. Uh, there's no evidence to support this hypothesis, and let's be real: everywhere would be haunted. Every, yeah, all of New England, all everywhere. of New England. Would well, be, well, no, I mean, all of the United States. All the everywhere. United States. No, all it's, of the world. Everywhere yeah. would just be fucking ridiculous. I mean, the United States is just basically a big Indian burial ground if we're going to get real. Yeah. Like, <laughs> the whole place. Yeah. Um, so, while this is not considered to be, canonically, the uh, phenomena of the region, it, without a doubt, happened in this Yeah. Area, right? And, like, I feel like talking about the Bridgewater Triangle without talking about Med Medicom's war is a disservice to the one very definitely verifiably real thing that definitely happened in the area. Yeah. So I want to also like, like once again, this happened. Yeah. Like five, uh, almost 6,000 people die as yeah. a result of this. <laughs> it's not something to be made light of in any way, shape or form. Um, but now let's get into the more danceable stuff. So yeah. that's that's it for the the, the history lesson. The, the serious portion of Cryptopedia this week. Um So in the Bridgewater Triangle, there is a region known as the Hakamak Swamp. In addition to being uh, a major in addition to being a wildlife management center, it is also the primary water source of the region. Um According Wait, the to the swamp very... is the water source? Well, it's 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 like lowlands. Like it's, I got it's you. a water it's a water table. Yeah. Right? Um according to various sources, although uh not sure if this is an everyone citing everyone case, like last yeah. week's episode. Uh Hakamak is an Algonquin word, which may be translated as place where spirits dwell. Um Lauren Coleman also had two differing translations of being Devil and evil spirit. Okay. Um, basically, there's an intrinsic link between the name of the swamp and spirits. Gotcha. So, just, just, that's pretty much all you need to take away from that. Okay. Um, one of the creatures that is said to have appeared in the swamp is the puck watcher. Hell yeah. I got, I got Can't, don't chew on the headphones. Continue. <laughs> so, I have a picture of the puck watcher there. It looks like it was drawn in 2012, and I don't know what their name is. Yeah. Um, it's like literally the only picture of the Puckwudgie I could find. Puckwudgie I could find. Yeah, they're little that dudes. Was, that was not related to Harry Potter. Oh, was it? <laughs> There's so much fan art about House Puckwudgie now that it was like, I want to just. Uh, can I just find one? Oh, no. Okay. Like, is there any. Oh, There's no, a there House no Puckwudgie? Yeah, it's it's in the. Uh, is that like new... extended universe stuff? Yeah, it, it's in the like Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them stuff. Is it? Like I know yeah. that they had a lot of stuff. I know it was a house though. They had a lot of yeah. creatures. So I couldn't see a Pugwudgie creature. I don't well, recall. A, uh, is that in the new the second one? It, it's I didn't see either of them, but I guess it's like Pottermore and like there's a yeah. the first one's a, fun. Yeah, there's an American school of wizardry and House Pugwudgie is one of the houses. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, legends abound in the Hakamak Swamp 
about the Native American spirit of the Pakwaji, which I wrote before I finished researching everything. Yeah. Uh, there's at least one tale, and then there's a ton more tales farther south. So maybe I was a little bit. Uh, <laughs> uh-huh. I was. A, I was a little bit uh, optimistic you, about. You jumped the gun. You jumped, I jumped the, the gun, and then I forgot to rewrite what I wrote. So, um, the Pugwaji, described by Charles Hoffman as the little man of the woods that vanishes, is a spirit of Algonquin war. Uh, comparisons in its appearance and stature may be likened to the Red Cap, episode one, a gnome, or the Leprechaun, episode twenty-nine. Okay. Yeah. Uh, basically, think of it as a small person who's... Little dudes. Yeah, they're little dudes. They're little dudes. Um, generally speaking, the Pukwudgie is a regional creature. Um, in the Greek lakes, Great Lakes, it's generally good-natured, uh, but it's not dangerous. So it's like a trickster, right? Okay. Uh, in the Northeast Algonquin tribes, so like main area, the Pukwudgie is a vengeful spirit who is only dangerous to those who have wronged him. Yeah, people who put things up on tall shelves. Yeah, those those. Yeah, they get they a ride special lots place. of fairground stuff. God damn it, Brandon. <laughs> um, so the the original Native Americans, the Wampanoag, which we talked about before, mm-hmm. of the Honkamock Swamp, viewed the Pukwudgie as a capricious creature, just as capable as leading you to safety as dropping you off a cliff. Oh, what a dick. Yeah, so, like, it, it's one of those situations where, hey, you could follow the Pukwudgie. He might take you back home safely, but he also might murder you. Yeah. Right? So, regardless, um, in this iteration of the creature, it's as likely to play a harmless trick or help its human neighbors as it is to kidnap a child or poison a well. <laughs> and with well poisoning. That's rough. It, yeah, it said sabotage, but I assume by sabotage they meant, like, That's literally. the only way you can... Was he going to yeah. fill it with sponges? Yeah. So, um, in their lore, the Pukwudgie is opposed by the cultural hero, Masha. Interestingly, cultural hero, in the context of the story, is sometimes referred to as Transformer by some folklore, oh. and as such is now in my vernacular. So you will never hear me say the term cultural hero again, I am only going to say Transformer. (laughs) Transformer Mashop was a giant married to a powerful medicine woman and little person, Squanit. It should be noted that Mashop was also strongly associated with whales and his children would eventually have the ability to transform into whales. What? Uh, That's pretty awesome. I'm going to say this. The skinny on whale road action jokes literally yeah. wrote themselves in my mind <laughs> that's fair that's yeah very I, fair. honestly honestly i don't need to even bring them up because it's there yeah like <laughs> if you understand the hot skinny on railroad action joke yeah you got the joke i don't need to do any more because <laughs> here's the thing i could make that joke but it's not going to land with people who aren't familiar with it at all <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh but the people who are familiar with it they got it they get it that's lazy on my part but who cares yeah <laughs> um so returning the pukwudgie masha is traditionally the enemy of the pukwudgie and in some tell- tellings both he and his son are even killed by them okay so effectively what happens is Mashup is favored by the Wampanoag. Yeah. Um, the Pukwudgies, being jealous creatures, uh, they basically turn into teenagers and act out for attention. Gotcha. Like, if you read the source, that is almost beat for beat what happens. Like, they're, like, jealous that Wampanoag is paying attention to the humans and, like, is in a better place of honor with the humans. Yeah. So they're like, yeah, well, if you're not going to like us, well... Uh, uh, we're gonna we're gonna steal your kids, hmm. or or <laughs> we're gonna tie your shoe your uh, your moccasin laces together. Yeah, I guess. we'll tie your shoelaces together, or poison your family. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know how I feel. It depends yeah. on whether or not I've been listening to some new metal. Yeah. <laughs> um. 
but yeah, so like historically speaking, that's like like uh, folklore speaking. That's pretty much everything on the, the Pukwudgie. They're tricksters. Yeah, and they they vary region to region. And like at that point, you can pretty much just talk about uh, specific sightings. Yeah, uh, like I've been trying to do a Pukwudgie episode for a while. Have you? <laughs> yeah. Um, and this is basically all I was I was able to. to suss out okay okay the road's been rough for curious george i will tell you that much. oh yeah yeah i took a screen chapter from uh the bridgewater triangle of the yeah site of, of the uh one of the sightings of the puck and uh yeah it does look like curious george has had a bad time there the rendering from the bridgewater triangle looks like <laughs> he's on like his second divorce it's four in the morning on a tuesday and he's walking home from the bar like that's actually the... <laughs> that's actually pretty close. Yeah, like like to the story itself too. Oh, is it? Yeah. So sightings of the Pukwudgie reportedly continue to this day in the Bridgewater Triangle. In particular, there's one in the Hockamock Swamp, which appears in the Bridgewater Triangle documentary. As we're making jokes about the image in the uh, uh, the episode. Yeah. Research. Um. An interview is performed about an episode in which William Rosso may have run into a Pukwudgie in 1990. May is the operative word because, uh, well, we'll get into it. <laughs> so, at the time of the sighting... May could be interchangeable with didn't, but continue. Yep. At the time <laughs> of the sighting, Rosso had been working the late shift in his hometown of Raham, Massachusetts. One night, which is inside the Bridgewater Triangle. So, yeah. um, One night, after getting off work, he was taking his dog for a walk under the high-tension wires behind his house. Um, if I, I'm sure most people have like some high-tension wires near where yeah. they live. That makes sense to me. Uh -huh. I'm not going to lie. Because it's just like, a, it's like a, a swath of land cut through the forest. Oh, yeah. And it's regularly maintained because they need to get access to it and vehicles and all that stuff. So I get that. That, that jives with me. Oh, that makes sense. Um, yeah. So as he approached the streetlight, which apparently he like must've left the trail and gone onto the street. Um, I don't know. I couldn't figure out the exact geography of this story. Yeah. Uh, as he approached the streetlight, his dog became spooked and it was like a, I think it was a shepherd Rottweiler mix. The guy says, okay. Um, its name was Samantha. And I remember that because when I watched that scene for the first time, I wasn't like fully paying attention. And he was like, Sammy was getting so spooked. And I'm like, <laughs> huh? I had to like rewind it because I thought yeah. that he was talking about an actual human being. Yeah. As though they were a dog. This is my dog, David. <laughs> yes. Um, this is my, my, my dog, Beauregard. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so he begins to hear a high-pitched whine sound, which he describes as sounding like Iwanchu Kia Kia, and it just repeated, basically. Did he do an impression of it, or did he just say it deadpan? He does do an impression of it. Okay. How's uh, that go? I'm not going to do it. Okay. Uh... Basically, uh, <laughs> you threw me yeah. off. You yeah. threw me off my groove. <laughs> Sorry. Gonna have to throw you out a window. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's defenestration. Yeah, I will defenestrate you. Oh, that sounds real gross. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Autoerotic defenestration. <laughs> 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 Unless I'm falling out a window, I just it doesn't do anything for me. Yeah. Um so a small figure walks into the light on two legs. And the small figure is the one that we've been talking about in the picture there. The okay. uh the curious Joris who sees better days. Um the creature was three to four feet tall, uh and unclothed, looked kinda like a little man, had short hair covering his body and a pot belly. Or as like or, or as you said, Brandon uh, curious George after two 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 divorces. Yeah. Um. Brandon's typing something. No, I'm not nervous. 
so the creature was the source of the noise. Uh-huh. Uh, Russo describes it as speaking to him and beckoning him closer. So uh, Curious George is asking Russo to get closer. Um, Russo left the scene hurriedly, uh, and he rarely shared his story until some 20 years later when he wrote a blog post to share the experience. Russo believes that the creature had been saying, we want you, come here, come here. I'm sorry, I just made stuff jump around on here. <laughs> All right, well, Brandon has posted a very good picture. That is definitely what the Pug Legend looks like. Um, he also... It also introduces the notion of rum ham into the Puck Wedgie lore, which I yeah. do appreciate. <laughs> uh, so that's that's okay. Uh, it's it's Danny DeVito, in case you haven't uh, sussed out that bit. So, since this is the first disputable claim that we've come across, I want to point out two major concerns in the account. Yeah. First, this occurred late at night, immediately after getting off work around midnight. Second... The account was retold years later, right? Um, and while I can't say he didn't actually see anything that night, there is no strong evidence that the Pukwudgie, or even an alien, was actually there. It might be actually, and if well, I'm he, being petulant, So if he gets off work at midnight, he might be working like second shift. Yeah, it was like four to midnight or something like that. I think, yeah. This is what he said. So... I don't know about you, but after I get off work, I'm a little dead. Just, 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 just a smidge. Yeah. <laughs> but, but part of that also comes from the fact that I have extreme anxiety. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and work is one of my anxiety triggers. So, you know, it's one of those fun things. Oh, yeah. Uh, now, if I'm being credulous and I'm, like, you know, kind of yes-anding this guy, yeah. I would like to see if there were any mysterious disappearances around then. Um... Because the myst- the, this mystical creature may have absconded with some other late night, late night traveler. Oh, okay. Or it was a man needing some sleep who misinterpreted an event that he misremembered years later. Yeah. Oh, that's true. This is years after the event? Yeah. I uh, gotcha. Or Danny DeVito was prowling. Or Danny DeVito was prowling. Mm-hmm. And then I put some stage notes in here that are unnecessary. Pause. <laughs> I see. Yeah. Pause for uh, discussion and jokes. Yep. <laughs> the um the fun thing is this is the this episode is the most prepared I've been for an episode in probably 15 episodes. That's fantastic. There's <laughs> Cuz I actually finished it more than a because I knew I was going to Detective Pikachu uh, yeah. last night at the time of recording. I oh, so you got it, it done Thursday. before. I, I got gotcha. I got it done on Thursday. Okay. Because I knew I would need to get it done. Um, I'm excited so, for Detective Pikachu, man. Oh, it's very good. It's very good. Uh, so there are more Pukwudgie tra- tales in the Bridgewater Triangle. However, Ooh. those happen farther south. And we're going to okay. definitely cover them in the future episode. Okay. Uh, because... I just wanted to limit what we we're talking about to Hakamok Swamp in this episode. Yeah. And there's literally too much happening for me to handle in an hour. Okay. <laughs> or even an hour and a half. Because you know yeah. what? We're still not even done with the Hakamok Swamp. Because guess what? Oh, uh, shit. Our bread and butter. Yeah. And the most noteworthy inhabitant of the Hakamok Swamp. Uh, our third host. Yeah. Bigfoot. Bigfoot. Uh, makes waves in the Hakamok Swamp. One of these days, we'll like actually figurative explain... or literal. Figurative. Le- like okay, figurative. I didn't see any instances of him like sloshing about. Gotcha. Um, one of these days, we'll explain the origin of Bigfoot. Today is not that day. I picture him when is a little with like uh like water wings, Bigfoot with water wings. <laughs> That's very on uh on brand for Cryptopedia though. Yeah, <laughs> just. Rolling around in the swamp. He's got a pool noodle, too. <laughs> oh, if he had a pool noodle, that would be phenomenal. Yeah. And, like, a little bit of that, that zinc on his nose. 
Oh, but he's got fur. Although yeah. I guess his face is a little bit bare. But yeah. <laughs> anywho. So, in his book, Mysterious America, Lauren Coleman covers a rash of Bigfoot sightings in the Triangle. Um, in one instance, in 1970, heavily armed state and local police, along with a pack of hunting dogs, hunted a bear that had been seen by a number of local Bridgewater residents. Tracks were found... Um, in this hunt. However, I couldn't find any articles about the event or pictures. Oh. Uh, so I'm not discounting that the event happened. I'm just saying I personally couldn't find external corroborating evidence. Gotcha. And Lauren Coleman didn't cite any articles in his, his book. Okay. Um, so Lauren notes that bears are not currently endemic to this portion of Massachusetts. And I looked that up. The official Massachusetts website, uh, like the government site, yeah. does back him up. And okay. I, I reproduced the, the map of Black Bear Range in Massachusetts. Um, that being said, I am super cautious of saying that it's not a black bear because Occam's razor is that it was actually a bear. Yeah. Because escaped animals happen. Animals outside of their normal range happen. And... Places that are not reputable take care of large animals like bears and then don't report when said bear is lost. Like, yeah. remember recently there was a zebra that got loose? Oh, like, yeah. In the past couple of years? Like, yeah. it happens. Yeah. And, and in the case of a black bear, someone might not even report it because they're like, ah, there's bears. Yeah. Right there. And there are people with exotic animal collections that uh, might not necessarily – supposed to have those animals so then if one gets out you're not going to be able you know call someone yeah and we're, we're talking about a region that's close to connecticut yeah well actually is it close to connecticut no it's close to rhode island regardless it's all very waspy um anywho so in april 1970 there was also another flap for potential bigfoot stories um there were stories of mutilated pigs sheep sightings of large hairy creatures and footprints after sightings of a seven foot tall creature. Okay. So there was like a weird flap. Now that's weird. I just, I've never associated Bigfoot with animal mutilation before, right? That no, seems unique that, but that was a part of it. Um, but that being said, uh, I think I remember reading somewhere where Lauren Coleman was talking about, I, it was on the Murphy Burroughs mud monster. Um, Lauren Coleman said that Eastern Bigfoot tend to be more violent and Western Bigfoot tend to be more chill. Okay. But I think that might be a cultural thing. Yeah. Because like it, all right. So we assume if we assume that Bigfoot exists. Okay. That might be a species classification. If we assume that Bigfoot is a fabric of the public zeitgeist, that might be the fact of the matter is, East Coast people are less, are a little bit more high strung. You know, and West Coast Coast people are less, like, are more unwound. Description, so that so the 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 social description fits. That description also fits the difference between black and brown bear, where we have black bear, and out west there's more brown bear. Yes, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Anywho. <laughs> Let's, let's just sweep that fact under the rug. Okay. Um, of note, one resident of Bridgewater had complained to the police of a large bipedal creature uh, making a ruckus in the backyards of the neighborhood. A police officer... <laughs> Milk steak! Milk Rum steak. ham! Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he's not large, though. He's short. Yeah, well, like, it's dark... You just hear weird noises. You see a glimpse of something darting from tree to tree out the corner of your eye. Who knows? I knew I, sh- I, knew I shouldn't have left that leather, leather couch in the backyard. A hundred percent of Danny DeVito's are born from leather, leather couches. Yeah. <laughs> like Ace Ventura style. And the first thing you have to do is feed them a toe knife. That scene from When Nature Calls is still... On my top ten of favorite it's, like, comedy bits. It's beautiful. It's perfect. The first time I ever saw it was out of context in a VHS store. Uh-huh. Where it was just, they had monitors 
just like CRTs in the corner playing uh. different videos they had. And that just out of context was on one of the monitors. And I was That's... like, I need to see that one. That's phenomenal. Yeah. Also, that reminds me, we still haven't talked about the cryptid that is the Sonic movie. Oh, that's true. Yeah, that's the the Sonic in the, the Sonic movie. So, one, if it weren't for the nightmarish creature that is Sonic the Hedgehog, and if it was just... Honestly, I'm not going to lie, Jim Carrey looks hilarious. He does. He legitimately looks funny. Yeah. Uh, he's 90s carry, which I love. That being said, someone on Reddit pointed out that there's a pile of shoes in Sonic's uh, in Sonic's <gasps> headquarters. Yeah. That have been ruined because of his him running too fast. There's a very real possibility that an animator animated each of Sonic's toes individually. And there's going to be an articulated scene of his toes entering a new shoe. This is a real, real, real threat to human, oh, no. humankind. This is so bad. Imagine like, that'd be the. I would have just quit if I was that guy. I, oh, I know. I don't need too. this. I know I work on commission, but I don't need this. <laughs> I yeah. I, I, that that movie. You definitely know that there were like interns who were like, "This is terrible." You know that, right? Who's the director of that movie? Uh, that's a good question. Because that has a strong sway over whether or not there will be that foot shot you're talking about. Jeff Fowler. Uh, let's see. What else did he do? That's why this is right. Because if it was Tarantino, you know there's going to be that foot scene. Yeah. Uh, well, the fact that Uma Thurman's not in it tells me it, Uma he, Thurman and uh. Yeah. Johnny Depp aren't in it. Tells me that it's not. Uh, yeah. He did Gopher Broke, Where the Wild Things Are, and The Goon. Uh, I'm looking at these movies, and it doesn't... Okay. Well, I'm not going to pass judgment on his talent. Anywho, uh, back to the story. So, after Danny DeVito was making a ruckus in the backyard, a police officer uh, like o- literally performed a sting operation on a bear. Yeah. Uh, and he reported having the rear end of his car picked up and dropped. And then when he flashed the searchlight, he saw a bipedal creature running away on two feet. Now, I... Oh. This is going to be his first feature-length movie. All right, sorry, I got distracted. Uh, really? Yeah, everything else he was, he did VFX. Um, oh, no, oh. he did Go For Broke. No, yeah, but Go For Broke is a, a short... So this will be his first feature-length movie. That augurs well. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> also, for the first time, uh, because of Magic the Gathering, I finally, I finally understand what auger is. Oh yeah, yeah. Because uh, Bolas is auger is a card. Oh yeah. Um, so unfortunately, I couldn't find any sources on the above story. It suffers from the same problem as last week, and the same problem as the previous story, and the same problem as Alien Big Cats, and the same problem as literally every story that we cover on Cryptopedia, it feels like. Uh, well, figuratively, because I think I found like a handful of cases where there is actually a newspaper story about it. Um, okay. The common problem of paranormal events, the actual source is buried in a cascade of self-referential posts... Uh, and in this case, the primary source of the paranormal reporters has become Coleman's seminal work. Oh boy. Okay. And Lauren Coleman doesn't cite the actual newspaper or the actual sources of these things. Yeah. There's no names. There's no hard and fast locations, dates. Well, actually there is one hard and fast date and that was April 8th, which Uh I think, no, I don't, I don't say here, but that's it. I had nothing to go on to corroborate this story. Yeah, that's it's a so, that's unfortunate. That's very common. Yeah, and that honestly, that needs to disappear from our culture in general, not just paranormal reporting, but in general. Uh-huh. And I'm gonna end it there 
We're not going to go into any more detail. We're going to move on to a picture of a man playing guitar. Who, one, looks like a thumb, two, sunglasses indoors, three, Uh playing an ovation guitar. So he he does get a plus one for that one. I like ovations. I do like the fact that you were able to pick out the fact that the, the brand of guitar. Yeah, I've got one like right in the back corner over there. Not I that exact model. I've got the, the, the other kind, but yeah. He he <laughs> turned around and pointed at his guitar. Every <laughs> uh, <laughs> so dipping back into the well of the Bridgewater Triangle, Carlston Wood, a child during the flap of the 1970s, uh, I totally botched my carefully crafted writing and carefully crafted language and grammar yeah because that was supposed to say carlston wood was a child during the flap of the 1970s a different (laughs) tone than uh jumping straight into the fact that he was a child so during this time while playing in the woods on a frozen lake with the local boys and girls wood had an encounter screams filled the new england woods when a boy started spotted a huge hairy man that sounds about standard so far yeah so, according to Wood, the man was glimpsed by every kid in the group. Okay, That's still the story. normal. Oh, there's the whole story. That's the story. Okay. Uh, I don't mean to be a spoil sport, but a group sighting, I spelt sighting, sighting with a C. <laughs> uh, by a swarm, my term, of course, of children, is not the most trustworthy of witnesses. No. The fallibility and suggestibility of a mob of adults' memory is bad enough. Later on top of that, it's a fact, like, it's a group of children. Yeah. Uh, and you have a recipe for Bigfoot, my friend. <laughs> That's Bigfoot waiting that to happen. That is Bigfoot. That's Bigfoot waiting to happen. So, while there are no doubt countless more sightings of Bigfoot in the region, uh, no other sightings break the mold. Like, every other sighting is basically like this. Yeah. So I'm not going to tell you every single one of these sightings. (laughs) Additionally, I haven't found any that occur past 2015. Well, I'm yawning. We're getting close to the end. Yeah. Of this episode. Because we're already at... Yeah. We've we've got enough. Um, (laughs) So, that barely scratches the surface of the paranormal Mm -hmm. phenomena that I found reported in the air. There's still more Puckwudgie stories, Tales of the Thunderbird, Alien Big Cats, Giant Snakes, mm. Satanic Panic, Profile Rocks, Ghost Hitchhikers, uh, Shucky Dogs, and just so much more. Okay. That's so a lot of stuff, di- man. Yeah. So rather than dilute any of the topics, this is going to be part one of the multi- multi-part series, as I said before. Okay. Uh, right on. This gives individual portions room to like be expanded upon. Let's me find better sources, uh, <laughs> determine corrections, formulate rebuttals and theories, and it might also give me a chance to visit the site, but I know how my life works. I will not have a chance to go three hours to Massachusetts. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Um, but that's all I got on the Bridgewater Triangle this week. Ooh, nice. Well, definitely, there's definitely going to be a follow-up. I don't know if it's going to be the next episode I cover. Yeah. But there's going to be a follow-up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and that's all I got this week. So, as always, uh, our website is cryptopediacast.com, which has all the links we're about to say. Uh, on Instagram, we're at cryptopediacast. On Twitter, at cryptopediacast as well. Uh, if you want to email us, cryptopediacast at gmail.com or us at cryptopediacast.com. We have a Patreon. Uh, there's three tiers on there right now. If you donate two dollars or two dollars and up in the Hodag or Jackalope tier, you get access to the research that we perform for each episode. Um, if you're in the Jackalope tier, you also get access to new uh... wow, new <laughs> podcasts. So like you get new audio access content, to, to yeah. premium premium audio content. So mm-hmm. let's see. This is releasing the 27th. So two weeks ago, we should have released two episodes of uh, something that Brandon produced and 
at the end of this week, we'll be releasing another uh, SCP. Nice. I'm excited for it. Um. If you want to follow us on Facebook, we do have a group and a page. Uh, but we also do all this stuff on Twitter as well. So yes, the Facebook group, by the way, is uh, what what do we have? It's like a closed. Like you got to ask to get in, but that's so that once you're in, like your friends and coworkers won't see whatever you do, so you don't have to worry about like posting something and then someone you work with figure you know, seeing it unless they are also in the group. Exactly. Yeah. Um, then, uh, what else are we, uh, if you like the show, rate, review, subscribe, uh, iTunes, CastBox, wherever you get podcasts. I don't think we have any Stitcher reviews yet, even though Stitcher is a very popular download location for us, apparently. Are we still like Um, the number one comedy podcast in Portugal (laughs) or something? Oh, man. It was like, we had that for like a day in like paraguay or something yeah, yeah. It, it was it was bizarre like yeah. I, I i can't remember let me see uh i think i saved it oh did you uh, it was like like it was like uh it starts with a p and it's south <laughs> like I want to say it was Paraguay. That much I'm comfortable with. <laughs> uh, podcast, pack, Patreon, Patreon, blah, blah, blah. Did I star it? Oh, no. did you star it? I, I can't find it, but okay. we, we based it was very funny because one day we were like the most downloaded in in some uh, South American country. Uh, country and yeah. I nearly died of laughter when yeah. that happened yeah because we look at where everyone uh we like look at the heat map of like where do where are people listening and we're just like how are we number one there yeah it was it was really funny i think i think apple no oh it was a uh, chartable or something like that okay like, sent us an email like hey just as an fyi you charted oh cool <laughs> and i was just like what yeah. What? That was back in like October, I want to say. Yeah. So, um, anywho, if you got monster requests, like this episode was a actual topic request, uh, mm-hmm. be sure to send them in and we'll be sure to cite you if we remember. Yeah, man. This one, Puckwudgie Connor Hughes. Actually, it was the Bridgewater Triangle in particular. Oh, was it specifically the Bridgewater? Tri- I thought it was just Puckwudgie. Okay. Puckwudgie was on the list, though. Gotcha. Um, if you have Creepypasta or Cryptopasta, I might read it. And oh my, oh my, my tired my tired yawns are coming on. We have are you fighting this. it? Okay. I am fighting this. <laughs> if you'd like, you could find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com. And my Twitter is at cryptobrandon. And just a reminder, it's Brandon with an O, B R A N D. Oh, and none of those other bad Brandons. Like Braden, Braden, Braden. There's Brandon with, there's Brandon. Brandon with, with a e. silent C. Yeah, Brandon, yeah, that's the worst of them all. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, on Instagram, I'm at new 2057 On Twitter, I'm at JF Dunham. Website, johndunhamgames.com. And, my, and I burped while saying my email, john at cryptopediacast.com. Our art was done by Tom Hill. You could find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com and his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. And uh, I just remembered this. Yeah. Because I've forgotten literally every episode that was in the month of May. Um, May is Mental Health Awareness Month. Ah. And I forgot to mention that, even though I wanted to mention that. Yeah. Every episode, but it was only reminded to me when I was basically falling asleep a few seconds ago. <laughs> um, so I, I think it's NAMI is the organization that does it. They handle like mental health uh, education and stuff like that. So it's like yeah. reducing stigma around mental health and all that stuff. Check yeah. it out. It's cool. It's interesting. Uh, that's all I got. Yeah, that's NAMI, N A M I, by the way. Yes. Yep. Yes. Uh, but anywho, uh, as always, I'm John. 
I'm Brandon. And things are going to get weird.